One dark snowy morning, Christmas had arrived. And while you, my dear player, may have enjoyed your day, some weren't so lucky. Greetings, everyone. My name is Etterville, and I welcome you all to my latest Mega Man Let's Play. It's of a title I've been waiting to do for quite a while. I apologize for not doing it during last Christmas. And Mega Man, you shouldn't waste your mug. It may have been expensive. So much for this Christmas going without a hitch. And there goes the Christmas tree and all the presents. Nice touch with all the sprite animations. Where is Dr. Light anyways, after what happened in the previous game? Is he locked in a temporary prison so he doesn't go crazy? Did we even recover all the presents from the previous game? Nevertheless, Dr. Y is trying to one-up Dr. Light and ruin Christmas even more. Will Dr. Kozik do the same if Christmas Carol Tree ever gets made? Meanwhile, in one of Dr. Y's many bases, Base joins the fight to save Christmas. I welcome you all to my Let's Play of Mega Man Christmas Carol 2, How Dr. Y Stole Christmas, a Christmas-themed Mega Man classic fan game developed by Ace Spark slash Pinkie Pie. I've been meaning to let's play this game for quite a while as I just said, so let's get started. You can set up a profile name, which I will do. This game has no save data, so once you start a game, make sure you finish it. It's not that long though, you can complete it in under 20 or 30 minutes. Even 10 to 15 minutes if really skilled. Anyways, we have four difficulty settings, baby mode, easy mode, normal mode, and hard mode. In baby mode, you take reduced damage and you deal increased damage to bosses. On easy mode, boss patterns are easier and damage to Mega Man is still reduced. Normal mode is just like the difficulty settings of most Mega Man Classic games and several fan games, aka normal Mega Man damage, boss damage, and timing. Whereas in this game, I'll be playing on hard mode, as it feels more balanced than hard mode in Christmas Carol 1. This mode is for those looking for a challenge, though I disagree that this mode is neither fair or balanced. It's a lot more balanced compared to Super Danny 2 and some of its boss battles. This mode has harder boss patterns, as well as a secret which I will get into. So let's get started. We have three characters as well, Mega Man, Base, and Proto Man. Mega Man is normal mode, Base is easier mode, and Proto Man is harder mode. I don't want to take extra damage with Proto Man, so I'll go to classic Mega Man. Here's our hub world. We have four choices of bosses. I'll be going through the bosses in a particular order to make it easier and so I can collect all the E-Tanks. Of note is that, if you were playing on normal mode, just below me, under this platform, would be an E-Tank. But as I'm playing on hard mode, I don't get access to any E-Tanks. Here we are, we can jump, shoot, slide, and do a charge shot. The Mega Man 5 charge shot, but it goes by a lot faster, at least twice as fast. And just like Christmas Carol 1, the sliding is a bit strange. It acts a lot faster, as if you button mash the slide button, it acts like a sun boost of speed, like a jet engine of sorts. It makes the slide feel a lot more awesome though. And I wish there was a power up you could equip in the main classic games, or a fan game that allow you to do this. It'd be great for speed running. Anyways, I'm going after Tiny Tim first. His E-Tank is easiest to get. Just open up your menu, get the rush coil, and jump up over here. Here's our main menu, we have our overall score, E-Tanks, W-Tanks, Beat Whistles, and the Exit Utility, which allows us to return back to stage select, but we can't use it during boss battles. We start off with the Mega Buster and Rush Coil. I'm starting off with Tiny Tim and Bob Cratchit, as out of the first four bosses, he's the easiest one to deal with. 
Tiny Tim's pattern is this. First, he'll fire two bouncy cherry bombs at you, which you can destroy with several buster rounds or one fully charged buster. After that, Bob Cratchit will fire his fist at the wall, and you need to jump on top of it to jump over Bob Cratchit. Although, somehow I was able to jump over him without it. Then you need to repeat the pattern from the other side of the room. Very set pattern, and not much differences when you go to a harder difficulty setting, outside of him getting a bit faster. It also seems that the boss and vulnerability frames are shorter. Nevertheless, that was Tiny Tim. At the end of every boss battle, we get a demonstration of the new weapon we acquired, some funny quotes from the character, as well as a full description of what they do. This is one of the best weapon get screens in a Mega Man fan game ever seen. The only thing that would be better is the weapon demonstrations you can do in Mega Man 11. I'll go over the score descriptions after the next boss battle. Whoops, I didn't mean to go to Scrooge's stage next. So this is a nice demonstration of how to use the exit utility. Though for some reason you have to use it twice before it actually works. I'm not sure why. Next up, I want to go after Ignorance. Ignorance, I'd say, is the second easiest one to deal with. And right in front of the boss entrance is the Beat Whistle. It will save us from falling into pits used automatically. Of course, the only time where we'll actually have a pit is during the final boss encounter, and I'll probably will need to use it. This boss battle takes place on a conveyor belt, and see those line of spikes on the right side of the wall? Those used to just be regular lasers on normal mode. For this first phase, we need to knock off Ignorance's head, then deal with his body. And once he reaches half health, the conveyor belt switches directions and he stays still over here, firing all these shock waves. And that's it. Very straightforward, in fact. Alright, score breakdown. The speed bonus is how fast did you defeat the boss. The power bonus determines did you use special weapons or not, and if you didn't, you get a bonus. The strength bonus, I believe is, did you defeat the boss without dying, or did you take any damage. Coffee bonus is that did you use E-Tanks or not. If not, 10,000 bonus points plus 1,000 times the number of E-Tanks you have remaining. Mega bonus is whether you use the Mega Buster or not. If you use just the Mega Buster, you'll get a bonus there. Road bonus is just your base total for when you defeat the boss. And courage bonus, I'm not sure what that does. I guess you lose the bonus if you decide to escape from the boss using the exit utility. The reason why I wanted to deal with ignorance first is that in order to collect this W tank, I need to hit all of these three targets at once, otherwise they will regenerate. Thankfully, the upgraded Twinkle Buster will do wonders here. It's a lot better compared to Christmas Carol 1. Unfortunately, during this playthrough, I'll only deal with the boss's buster only. But hey, if you're having a more difficult time, feel free to use special weapons, especially on hard mode. Scrooge, I'd say, is the most difficult boss out of the bunch. Especially as he has a Grab Buster-like ability.
that went pretty well. During my last few playtests, I died a lot more. You just need to get used to how he just jumps over you when you try firing a projectile at him, and use that to manipulate when you can slide under him. And yeah, I'd love to have this weapon back in the previous game. Oh well, better late than never. Especially with the existence of Christmas Carol 1 Remix, which I will cover during the next Christmas. In a way, I feel that this score system makes this game feel more like an arcade game. You're rewarded for doing better with less, basically. Last but not least is Want. I'd say that he's the second hardest. He even gains a new attack on hard mode. And here's the last E-Tank. Hopefully I won't need to use it during the final boss encounter. Makes sense why he's called Want. Look at all this cake everywhere. Cake and candy canes. Juan's pattern is this. He'll jump around the room, try striking you with his candy cane, which on hard mode creates shockwaves, and after he takes enough damage, the threshold of which decreases on harder difficulty settings, he'll start throwing his candy cane at you at a high speed. That thrown candy cane can deflect your shots. You also have to worry about the explosive candy canes falling from the ceiling. In fact, out of all four bosses, I say that he changes the most from normal to hard mode. This is certainly useful during the final boss encounter, but I won't use it. Especially as they can stack sideways off of each other, as demonstrated here. Once again, I wish more fan games had this level information during the weapon get screen. Or even better, Mega Man 11's weapon gets screen. Here's something a bit different. If you were playing on normal mode, you'd go directly to the final boss encounter. But if you play on hard mode, you gain access to another boss encounter. Yep, it's a devil boss. Thankfully you have access to sliding, so it isn't too bad. This is the Light Devil. And honestly, I wouldn't say this is difficult. In fact, I say that Ignorance and Scrooge are more difficult. The ceiling spikes are no threat whatsoever, I'd say. If you decide to do this boss battle buster only, you can complete it in just two cycles. If you decide to use his weakness, you can do it in just one cycle. For a hard mode extra, it wasn't that difficult. That was a bit strange. If the game's window gets deselected or loses focus, the sound effects and music stop playing. Here is the final stage. Sad that we don't have any extra boss battles before the final encounter, like in Christmas Carol 1. This is a trick by the way, jump over it. Welcome to the hardest boss of this entire game, the Wily Machine, which has three phases. The main reason why it's difficult is due to phase two. First, you need to destroy the bottom cannon and the light bulb. Thankfully, these don't have any invulnerability frames, so just spam your buster. Of course, that means certain weapons like the Twinkle Buster 
as well as the multi-hit weapon work wonders against this. As the first phase done, this Christmas tree will continuously keep spawning these presents down. The red ones will just drop to the ground, and its only weakness is its eyes. The yellow ones will spawn this Metar Caterpillar. The purple ones will hit the left side of the screen and release these penguins. See what I mean by the bosses having lower invulnerability frames? I first want to dispatch this caterpillar before I move to the next part of this boss battle. Ah, uh, oh well. I want to deal with that first before I deal with Wily. If I was playing on normal mode and completed phase 2, all penguins and caterpillars would be destroyed. But here, I have to deal with it myself. You know what, I'm just gonna use an E-Tank here, I don't wanna die. The cost of dying is more than the cost of using an E-Tank. This is the final phase of the boss battle, by the way. You just need to destroy tree cannons, and they all have the same difficulty as each other. And that's it! That was the Wily Machine! All things considered, this boss only had three phases. First, where I had to destroy the cannon and the light bulb, the second one where I needed to destroy the eyes, and this last one where I needed to hit the Wily Machine itself. The hardest part is the second phase, as you can more easily than not get knocked into the pit, and you only have one beat call there. Sadly, no speed bonus. As I didn't defeat the boss fast enough, you need to use special weapons for that. Oh well, I lost a 10,000 coffee bonus, but it was well worth it. I still maintain the strength and mega bonus. I think you get 100,000 points if you defeat the boss without taking any damage. Sadly, I can't submit my scores online, it breaks. Thank you, Random Rock. Dr. Wally escapes with the presence. I wonder if you get a different ending if you play as a different character. That's probably the case, knowing Ace Spark. I mean, look at the attention to detail with the sprite animations during the introduction. To be continued in Christmas Carol Tree, whenever that gets released. And the storyline didn't continue next Christmas. There has been quite a bit of delay there. Well, Christmas Carol 1 Remix was released, so I guess that's the next part. Or a reboot. And by using the Konami code at the beginning of the level, or beginning of the game, we can use weapons from the first game. So let me showcase it right over here. Sadly, you can't open up the menu in the state select screen. So let me go to what's effectively the boss corridor. By completing the game on hard mode, the Konami code unlocks access to all the special weapons from the first game and this game. If you completed the game on normal mode, the Konami code only unlock weapons from this game. So we have Marley Shackle, Present Surprise, Past Minion, and Future Slicer. You can fire up to 5 candy canes at a time. You can use this as a booster, like the Rush Coil in fact. And you can chain it together if you're fast enough.
Here's past minion. Though it's been altered for this game a bit, as you can now choose which minion to pick. We'll have the same abilities in Christmas Carol 1 Remix. So, four or five Roadmasters to choose from, and Future Slicer. In fact, all these upgraded and polished weapons are from Christmas Carol 1 Remix, backported to this game. I never really showcased this weapon. This was the explosive weapon I was talking about and how it can rapid-fire hit enemies, and how it can actually ignore enemy defenses if you're fast enough. And that's about it. There is one last thing I wanted to talk about. There are a whole bunch of other secrets that are present in this game with the achievements. And I only unlocked one or two of them. In order to see the actual hands, you need to mouse over it, so... Let's see, selection. Who needs a menu? I suppose what that means is that you're supposed to complete the game without opening up the menu whatsoever. And if you want to switch special weapons, you have to use the numbers on a keyboard. Scrooge 1, Angel of Death, Want 1, I need no humbug. Strange, it means that I have to use the humbug some way. Scrooge 2, recreating Dickens' novel. Wand 2, cherry on top. I guess we need to drop that cherry somehow. Ignorance, who needs weapons? Can you defeat the boss without using any weapons? And Wily, relight the tree. So set it on fire, eh? With Solar Man, that'll work that way. Anyways, my overall thoughts about this game are that it's a pretty good short title. Oh sure, it's essentially a boss rush, but all the bosses are done in a really polished manner, and all of them are fair to fight, even on hard mode, even better than Christmas Carol 1. And I believe Christmas Carol 1 Remix improved upon that as well. All the weapons are fun to use, although I didn't really use them here, and each of the characters has their own unique niche they can play around with. I strongly recommend you try out this fan game. I'd say that this was actually superior to Super Danny 2, even though this is much shorter. I'd love to play Christmas Carol 1 Remix next Christmas, and we'll hope and wait and see when Christmas Carol 3 comes about. Well then, I thank you all for watching, and wish you all a Merry Christmas!